All right, here we are. Welcome to France. Welcome to the French Renaissance. Here we are, slide one, and surprise, surprise, as we begin looking at the French Renaissance, we're going to see that at the start of it, around 1540, classical plays, the Greeks and the Romans, began to be translated into French. So, by 1550, plays by Sophocles, Euripides, and Seneca were all being printed and disseminated, um, as well as copies of Aristotle's Poetics. Remember talking about that um, last week and, or a couple of weeks ago, and also um, recent Italian plays were being translated and Italian commentaries on poetics and on neoclassicism were being translated. So the French people are having a chance to read all of these pieces because they are being translated into French and they're being printed and sold. Um, and so French playwrights start to write their own original pieces that are modeled on the classical forms of the Greek playwrights and on Aristotle's ideas about neoclassicism. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, about Aristotle's ideas that are in poetics and the ideas about neoclassicism that start to emerge during the Renaissance. And um, the French playwrights are writing tragedies that really emphasize the suffering of characters who are the victims of fate and who describe their suffering in, in a series of speeches, but there's not a lot of dramatic tension going on. The French playwrights are, are still kind of trying to learn how to do all this. Um, and their, their comedies that they're writing were decent in structure and form, but they just kind of resembled medieval farces in their subjects or what they were talking about. So it was just kind of like raunchy humor and nothing else. But by 1572, the neoclassical ideal, remember we talked about that when we were introducing the Renaissance, this neoclassical ideal had now been fully set forth in France. But French playwrights were only adhering to the rules kind of sporadically, mostly because the medieval influence was still around and playwrights were more likely just to try to please their audiences than to adhere to these new rules, right? They were like, well, my audience doesn't really care about neoclassicism. They just want to see um, a good old medieval farce. So that's what I'm going to write it. Um, so it was a slow, a slow turnaround. Um, some of the most characteristic entertainments in France prior to 1600 were the court festivals. Royalty were very fond of using festivals with theater performances to illustrate France's power and to encourage other nations to become their allies. So the court spectacles were really big and neoclassical plays were gaining in strength, slowly but surely, but they were mostly only appreciated by an educated class. So this leaves the French public stage at kind of a low place at the beginning of the Renaissance, but that's gonna be changing. And I'll see you on the next slide.